Welcome to the ENME 351 video lecture series. This is part one of a two-part installment where we'll be taking an introductory look at the Arduino. This lesson explores the Arduino hardware and associated functionality. The digital logic circuits discussed in the preceding lessons form the basis really for all of the microcontrollers and microprocessors that we're familiar with and that we work with today. The adding circuits in particular would go here into the ALU or the arithmetic logic unit. And along with some control circuitry, typically uh, also formed from digital logic circuits, we really form the basis of the microprocessors or microcontrollers that we tend to work with. And we often uh, condense these terms into the more generic term micros. And there are several different types of micros, the most common of which is uh, typically the microprocessor, right? This is the most familiar. You have these in your smartphones and your laptop. The microprocessor is effectively just a CPU, a central processing unit, okay? Effectively everything that's in the red box to the left here. And the microprocessors, you know, they're fast. They tend to be uh, uh, rather expensive and, and power hungry. So you frequently have to actually plug the device using the microprocessor into the wall, right? So you should be familiar with this and that you have to plug your phone in periodically to, uh, to recharge, right? So the microprocessors tend to be a very power hungry device. The microcontroller is another type of micro, and the microcontroller uh, is comprised of a CPU and what we call peripherals. And these peripherals might be memory, uh, digital I.O., I.O. being uh, input-output, they might have clocks or different uh, communication protocols. So there's these peripherals that are sort of bundled with the CPU. And you might think at first glance, well, I'm getting more, I'm getting the CPU plus the peripherals. But really, the microcontrollers, they tend to be rather slow relative to the microprocessor. Um, they do tend to be inexpensive, which, which can be advantageous depending on the application, um, and they draw significantly less power than the microprocessor. And then finally, there's a, a bunch of sort of other micros, one of which would be the ASIC, the application-specific integrated circuit. There's the DSPs, these are digital signal processors, and then there's FPGAs, which are effectively a, a large amount of logic gates that can be programmed. So the FPGA is known as the Field Programmable Gate Array. The Arduino that we're using in class this semester, and you may have used uh, in the past, is the Arduino Uno. Now, the Arduino is the entire board, right? The Arduino is not a microcontroller not a microcontroller. When you're looking at the board here, the microcontroller is actually this integrated circuit. Now in this Arduino Uno, the microcontroller is the Atmega 328. And you may see on some Arduinos, you may see the Atmega 328P for Pico power. But the Atmega chip is the microcontroller and the Arduino is the entire board containing the microcontroller. So this combination of the Atmega microcontroller with all the functionality you see here on the Arduino board enables a variety of really interesting and exciting applications with the Arduino. So here I have a USB connector that's giving me power and communications. Here I have input power if I wanted to power the Arduino from the wall. And this is rated from uh, 7 to 12 volts input, which then gets regulated uh, after the fact for the Arduino to uh, use. Here I have a variety of uh, power uh, connectors here. I have 5 volts, 3.3 volts. Uh, some sensors, such, such as uh, the accelerometer chip in your parts kit, let's say, actually uh, need 3.3 volts instead of 5, so both are available here. We also have uh, multiple uh, ground pins, and then we have a, a voltage in option, which uh, has some interesting applications as well. Now over here we have six different analog inputs, and um, this is really advantageous when we're trying to connect various sensors to our Arduino, right? So, so eventually these analog signals have to be uh, uh, discriminated and thresholded, right, and converted to a digital signal. And we'll talk uh, later about how to uh, convert from analog to digital. But we have six pins here available for, uh, for use. Up top here, we have our digital I.O., digital input and output. So we can use these as both input and output ports. Um, just to take a step back then, the analog inputs uh, at the bottom of the board, they're only for inputting analog signals. Up top, we have the ability to do both input and output 
uh, with digital signals here. So there are zeros and ones, right? And in terms of the Arduino, they're either going to be zero volts or five volts. We also have an LED, which is quite useful for various sanity checks and debugging your circuit. These squiggly tildes here, those represent digital outputs that also function as PWM outputs or pulse width modulated outputs. Now this is effectively a pseudo analog output and we'll discuss that uh, at, at a later time. There's a reset button here, which is advantageous if you'd like to completely cycle power to your board. And then there's a piezoelectric crystal here, which forms a clock for various timing signals that are used by the Arduino. In this case, we have a 16 megahertz clock. The Arduino is even more powerful when we connect the Arduino to circuits we build ourselves, for example, using the solderless breadboard here found in your parts kit. And these breadboards are laid out such that you have buses running along both edges. So all the pins in the box here are connected. And given the minus sign, all these pins are typically denoted and used for ground. The next column over here on the left, all of these pins are connected to each other. And typically, because of the positive sign, we're going to assign 5 volts from Arduino into this breadboard here. Now, if I use additional wires, I can connect the bus on the other side of the board as well, such that I have 5 volts in ground running vertically on both sides of my breadboard. And if we look at the interior of the breadboard, we'll find that the horizontal rows are connected to each other as well. Here I have row 17 and columns A through E are all connected to each other. Here we have row 14 and columns F through J are all connected to each other, and so on and so forth. However, unlike the buses on the edges of the breadboard, these horizontal rows on the interior of the breadboard, their vertical columns are not connected. Just the rows are connected A through E and F through J for each numbered row here. Understanding the layout of the solderless breadboards, then I can plug in a variety of discrete components, such as an LED or a resistor, and I can build a circuit to interface with my Arduino and ultimately my mechatronic system. In the software world, a typical first program is Hello World, which will display the words Hello World on the screen. In the mechatronics world, however, the first step is often to turn on an LED. So a simple approach will be using a current limiting resistor and a light emitting diode. Remember, an LED is a diode that emits light. And we'll connect the resistor then. The input to the resistor will be connected to 5 volts input power. And the output of the LED will be connected to ground. Assuming then that the hardware is set up properly, I should see my LED illuminated when I apply power to the Arduino, either through the USB or through the wall power plug. Like any good engineer then, let's simulate this circuit in Tinkercad before we actually build the real hardware. So here in Tinkercad, I have an Arduino Uno and a solderless breadboard. I have a five volt line coming off the five volt pin from my Arduino into the five volt bus on my board. And I have a ground line from the ground bus on my board back to a ground pin on the Arduino Uno. I have a current limiting resistor here. This is a 330 ohm resistor, but really any resistor will do. So power is coming through my bus, through my current limiting resistor, into the anode of my LED, the long end. Going through the LED, out the cathode, the short end and then through another pin connected to ground and back to my Uno. So let's go ahead and apply power through the USB connector and simulate. I hit start simulation, power is applied, and lo and behold, my LED is illuminated. I hit stop simulation, remove power, LED is no longer illuminated. That's great. So let's go ahead and build this with real tangible hardware. Here I have an Arduino Uno board, a solderless breadboard, a 330 ohm resistor that I'll be using as my current limiting resistor, and a red LED where I've denoted the anode or long pin, and the cathode or the short pin. And you'll notice at this point that there is no power applied to the Arduino board. It's important when you're building your circuit 
or even debugging your circuits for that matter, to go ahead and make sure that neither the USB nor the wall jacks are supplying power as you're physically changing the circuit. Let's go ahead then and begin constructing our circuit by connecting a wire from the five volt power out from the board to the plus rail on the side of the solderless breadboard, the positive five volt bus, as well as a wire from the ground pin on the board to the negative or ground rail or ground bus on the breadboard. With power and ground connected, let's continue. Let's go ahead and put our 330 ohm current limiting resistor in series with our five volts. Then we'll connect our LED anode to power and cathode to ground to complete our circuit. With our circuit complete, we'll go ahead and apply power to our board and voila, hello world. 